What up YouTube? This is Steven and welcome back to another video. In this video I want to talk about uh, Joel Lindsay in relation to the English language. You know? And the reason being is usually when I search for um, you know videos about Joel Lindsay and the English language like I'm looking for videos that you know you know, videos where people talk about Joel Lindsay's, you know, education in English language and literature and some of the products she re has released um, in the English language as well as re like pertaining to the English language. And I wasn't able to find those videos. I don't think they really exist. I don't think people really want to talk about it. Or it's, it's, I don't think it's a topic of interest for someone enough to make a video about it. So, with all that being said, I was just saying, like, okay, why not me? Why not Why not I just make a video? <clears throat> so, here we are. And first, I want to just speak on uh, Jolyn Tsai's education. Um, as you Jolyn fans probably know by now, Jolyn Tsai has a bachelor's degree in English language and literature. And she obtained the degree from Fujian Catholic University in Taipei, Taiwan, and she graduated college about 2003. <clears throat> and for me, I was like, wow, like I'm not really used to hearing about, um, you know, entertainers pursuing, um, you know, degrees in higher education. So I was like, wow, that's pretty cool that Jill Inside would do that. And also, um, she did it in a language, <clears throat> in a language as well, excuse me. She did it in a language. And I can relate to that as well because um, one of my fields of specializ specialization, you know, one of my majors is in a language as well. Mine's a Spanish language and literature. So I can understand Jolyn Tsai's, you know, fascination and interest in language. And I was just wondering, like, kind of like, makes me think, you know, what prompted Joe Lindsay to pursue a bachelor's degree in English language and literature? Well, I suppose she wanted to learn English or continue learning English on a collegiate level and improve her English language abilities. Um, and as well, maybe she may feel like it is you know, the English language is an asset for her to know, you know, since she is in the entertainment business. And that is true. I would, I would say so. Um, however, I know that um, it's like Joel Inside did not study abroad from what I heard. And that kind of struck me as a bit odd because I feel like Joel Inside kind of has the, she has the, what do you call it? She has the resources available to her to study abroad, mainly the money, keep it real. Like she has the resources available to her to study abroad. So I kind of, that was kind of struck me as a bit odd. I'm like, why didn't Joel Inside study abroad when she uh, studied English? Um, I guess maybe she didn't want to, or maybe just didn't have the time to, maybe because she was probably pursuing her degree as well as having a career in the industry as, at the same time, so maybe she didn't have the time to do so. I'm not sure, you know. Um, but yeah, that struck me as a bit odd. I was just like, you know, it seemed like she, she would be the perfect candidate to study abroad. Um, but nevertheless, I still commend her for um, pursuing higher education and as well pursuing a degree in language as well. And I have a lot of respect for Joanne doing that, and I think that's a good example for the youth. So definitely, Joanne gets a check mark from me. Um, <clears throat> um, Joanne has also published some books in regards to teaching English for um, people who speak uh, Mandarin Chinese. Uh, let's see. I believe the first book that she published. Um, was more or less titled uh, Jolyn's Size or Jolyn's English Diary. Um, 
according to this article um, published by the the new paper um, written by Juan Carping um, called Joan Side Point of Controversy. Um, she published her first English um, teaching material book, or whatever you want to call it, in about 2005. It was uh, called Jolin English, Jolin's English Diary, and it was aimed to teach readers the language, English, through reading her diary. And the book contained about 72 choice phrases to use in essay writing and a CD of Jolin reading English prose. So I'm guessing that's where that whole, you know, she kind of drawn back to her English language, well, her English literature from her degree, you know, the English language and literature degree she had. <clears throat> so I thought that was pretty cool because she's um, publishing material for people who speak Mandarin Chinese to use in order to um, learn English. And she is in the public eye as well. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people will be willing to look at her material and give her material a chance versus say you know somebody from University A who like some professor from University A or B what people don't really know about they probably won't be willing to give that person a chance just because they don't know about that person and they probably don't even know that that person even released material but another story for another day let's stick with Joe Lynn's story here for today <clears throat> All right. Her second book, loosely translated as Jolin's Party, was released um, about the end of 2005 with a focus on partying. The book introduced 2,000 English words. So I'm guessing Jolin's side had a book about partying, I guess party phrases and terminology that you can use. Okay, I know that is something. <laughs> I don't think that's probably the most practical thing, but maybe she's doing it in the sense like, okay, a lot of songs focus on partying in the English language. So like, okay, here's some phrases that you can learn so that you can better understand the English lyrics of these songs. Maybe. Okay. And here's something that's really cool. Joel and Sai also translated um, Madonna's children book our children's book, The English Roses, into Mandarin Chinese. That's pretty cool. So she used her, you know, the ability that she had and that she learned um, when she attended Fujian University. She um, used that to translate Madonna's children's book into Mandarin. So she kind of brought Madonna's children book, The English Roses, into the Mandarin Chinese language. So that is cool. Like, you know, she's using her um, ability, you know, using her English language skills to translate um, a book for Madonna as well, which is even cooler, too. It's like, um, I'm pretty sure Madonna probably didn't even know who Jolene Sai was. No shade to Jolene, but a lot of times Western artists are kind of oblivious to Eastern artists. <clears throat> um, but perhaps maybe she might know of her, know of her now. But then again, probably not because Madonna's just like, whatever, you know, I don't really keep up with that stuff, you know. But um, back to Jolin. Let's see. Her third book, Love Exercise, was released in 2009. And it teaches English words relating to love and romance through a series of classic English love songs. Okay. Well, I don't think they're classic. Right. This is probably the one I'm most familiar with. Um, I do remember Jolene releasing an album called Love Exercise as well, where she did covers of English language songs. Um, not all of them related to love, though. I know she did a cover of Pink's um, Get the Party Started. That doesn't really relate to love um, or romance. But nevertheless, she did um, do... All right. She made an album called Love Exercise, and on the album, she covered various English language songs. Me, personally, I don't think she should have did that or go on that route, because in comparison with Jolene's size covers in the original 
um, the originals. I think that Joel and size covers are lacking. And it's it's mainly, it could be a lot of things, but mainly for me it's because of Joel and size pronunciation. While I do think Joel and Sai is, um, you know, speaks English pretty well considering taking all things into consideration, I don't think she was up to the level of singing, you know, let's get the party started or um, let's get physical or um, let's see, kiss me, you know, that whole kiss me at the by the Milky Twilight song, you know, I think that those songs had a lot of complex phrases in them that I don't think Joel and Sai was capable of pronouncing properly properly, at least at that time. So I don't think she should have gone that route. Instead, I really think that Joel and Sai should have went the route of, okay, let's, you know, do some English language songs or English language versions of my popular songs. I think she should have went that route instead. Um, but, um, yeah, so this is what we have, you know? Well, you know, this is what the public had or was given, you know? And also the songs kind of was more like English, unfortunately, um, because of Joel Inside's pronunciation. But, hey, I guess she went for it, you know? At least she went for it. <clears throat> and, you know, some people have had some criticisms of Joel Inside in regards to the English language. Um, it was reported that, I guess, like, Joel and Sai made some error, errors in some of her um, material. Like she spelled congratulations wrong. She spelled sugar wrong. She spelled Kylie as in Kylie Minogue wrong. She spelled it as Kelly instead of Kylie. Um, but overall, I do encourage, like, you know, I encourage her. I encourage Jolyn and give Jolyn a lot of praise and congratulations and props for even doing this because a lot of artists don't do this. A lot of artists just rest on their laurels and just don't really kind of like challenge themselves and push themselves. And she's pushing herself in like an academic sense as well, not just in the entertainment sense. So I give Jo Linsai a lot of credit for doing what she did and doing what she continues to do. And I know as well currently, um, the most current thing, well, one of the most current things I can think of is Joel Inside. She released an English language song in collaboration with Pepsi called um, Now Is The Time. And I was like, okay, okay, all right. The song itself isn't spectacular, but I think Joel Inside's English is pretty decent on the song. <clears throat> and she also used a lot of English in her song, um, I'm Not Yours, featuring Nami Amura, and she wrote the song herself too. And while some phrases in the song are kind of odd, I do think overall the song works, you know. Um, and I give Joel Inside much praise for being able to do something like that and, you know, incorporate English into her songs, you know. I do wonder from a career standpoint, um, outside of the entertainment industry. What um, JoLynn was pl planning on doing with her English language degree, you know? <clears throat> was she planning on being a teacher, a translator, an interpreter? Um, none of the above. Who knows? Like, I'm, But I'm a bit curious, you know? So it's like for me, I guess this video is kind of me kind of like wanting to learn more about Jolyn Sai from an academic standpoint, you know, which usually you don't, a lot of people don't really, aren't really interested in learning about celebrities to an academic standpoint. And to be fair, a lot of celebrities don't really offer you an academic standpoint, you know, but um, Jolyn Sai is offering us this. And I'm interested. I really am. I just, you know, I kind of wish she would speak about this a little bit more in maybe some of her interviews, but then again, maybe it just doesn't come up for her to speak about it, <clears throat> at least in a positive way. Um, you know, I think I remember her saying her favorite book um, was Pride and Prejudice. And I never personally read the book. I just heard of it. You know, 
I'm a native English um, speaker, and I never read the book. So congratulations to you again, Joanne Sai. One up in us again, or one up in me. <laughs> There's also a video on YouTube floating around where Jolin Sais is teaching, I think, Sholo or Shola. I don't quite know how to pronounce his name, but um, teaching him a popular um, entertainer uh, English. She is like going through and she's like a teacher pointing at the uh, board and like, you know, hot, hot chick, you know, diva, dresser, you know. <laughs> Kind of teach us some random English words. <clears throat> um, but yeah, some people have had some criticism of Joe Lynn English and said that it's bad. Me personally, I don't have those criticisms. But to be fair, I think those criticisms strongly and largely are coming from Asian people. Which is a little strange, but I guess Asian people are a bit more harsh when it comes to speaking English. I guess I would be a bit more lenient because... I know the challenge of speaking a foreign language. So I guess I would be a bit more lenient on Jolin than some Asian people who may not know the challenge of speaking a foreign language because they may have just learned English natively, perhaps. And that's where they compare her to other celebrities and they're like, okay, these celebrities speak English so well and so fluently. Well, perhaps they do because they were raised in English language environments and then spoke their Asian language at home and then move to some you know their Asian country afterwards so yes I'm pretty sure they do know how to speak English really well you know if you had that resource available but Joel inside did not and at the end of the day you know accents aren't particularly bad what's bad about an accent really as long as you can be understood right but then again, you know, in the world we live in, there is discrimination and things like that. So it's just a way for people to kind of discriminate against people and also to place themselves above other people and say that, okay, I'm a bit more above you because I speak English, you know, so well and so fluent, fluently, you know, <clears throat> versus you who don't speak it so well and fluently. And yeah, but that's the world we live in. And JoLynn has also, I know there's a clip on YouTube of JoLynn um, speaking English with the Associated Press in regards to her fashion line, um, 72 changes or 72, 72 transformations or something like that. Um, her fashion line is um, no longer available. It, um, it shut down, unfortunately, because of some issue between... Um, the companies in the United States and the companies in, I think, China. But yeah. But she was speaking English there too. And also, there's another clip of JoLynn speaking English on her kind of like this like little mini documentary that she did when she was in Paris that she posted on her official YouTube channel, which I thought was pretty cool. She was speaking English there. And she also spoke a little tiny bit of French too. <laughs> and as well, of course, Mandarin Chinese. You know, but in regards to Jolin Tsai's English language education um, from Fujian Catholic University, um, from what I've heard, um, I think that Fujian Catholic University has a strong English language program, and that may have been the draw for Jolin, um, you know, as far as her choosing Fujian Catholic University as a college um, to pursue her degree in English language and literature. <clears throat> um, and also, I did uh, I did mention that um, Joel and I did not study abroad uh, when she was pursuing her degree in English language and literature. I myself did not study abroad when I was pursuing my um, degree in Spanish language and literature. Um, but for me, it was just a combination of um, not being able to fit it into my schedule, and as well having, um, you know things that I needed to do that I couldn't leave the country. Like if I left the country, they wouldn't get done, you know? As well, I was pursuing another degree at the same time and also working um, part-time and also had bills to pay, you know, keep it real, you know? <clears throat> um, so for me, 
That's why I couldn't, you know, go abroad, unfortunately. But fortunately, I think I might be getting to a place where I can go abroad, you know. Uh, but at the end of the day, that won't stop me, just like it won't stop Joel inside. You know, we're still going to do what we're going to do. We're still going to accomplish the things that we want to accomplish in regards to our um, education and degrees with or without studying abroad. But for me, I will say that I live in a language, well, I live in a language. I live in a country uh, where my foreign language Spanish is spoken quite often, more often than you may think. I live in the United States, and the United States has, United States has a large Spanish-speaking population. So while I did not study abroad, I was still kind of influenced. Like I can turn on the TV and um, listen to the Spanish language like broadcast. <clears throat> Turn on the radio, listen to the Spanish radio broadcast. Um, go to some st stores and pick up a Spanish language magazine or some Spanish language books. Or, you know, there's some publications in Spanish as well, you know. So, yeah, I do have resources. As well, there's Spanish-speaking communities, you know. So, for me, a little different, you know, a little different. I don't think Joe Lensai had the exact situation allotted to her because I don't think English is like that in Taiwan um, <clears throat> but you know overall yeah you know we just you know you make it happen you do what you have to do because that's what you, you know it's that's what you have to do in order to get where you're trying to go you know so I think I've said enough for the time being. So thanks a lot for watching. You guys, feel free to comment. Feel free to subscribe. Feel free to give me a thumbs up. Your feedback and support are extremely appreciated and extremely valued. As well, what do you think of Joel Lensai's English? Hey, let me know. <clears throat> thanks a lot for watching. Adios and goodbye for now.